All right, all right. What's up, boys and girls? Um, so I spent a bit of time yesterday working on the uh, the typhoon, um, and it it turned into I I thought I was a lot closer to primer than I was, um, which is fine, which is a good thing. So I spent uh, spent quite a while doing seams and whatnot, and with this video, I'm. I edited out one section where my one of my alarms went off and it was really loud and piercing. So that's where you see the break at about 10 minutes in or so. Um, other than that, this is pretty much the entire session. Um, so we are ready for a primer at this point, except for one thing, and that is the uh, landing lights here. I'm not sure if I'm going to put those in first. Um, maybe I'll do primer first and then we'll, we'll, uh, point being, I don't know how well they're going to fit. And if they're typical old school monogram, they're probably not going to fit great. So it's best to attach them and sand them down and, you know, form them in and polish them out and then, um, mask them. Um, that's the best way to deal with those, but. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, but anyway, as for this video, it's all about prep. So, um, like I said, it's the whole thing. Um, it's going to be about an hour. It's good background noise. Um, or if you're a nerd like me, you want to just see how somebody else tackles things and, and thinks through the whole entire thing as it's going along. That's what this would be good for. So, um so yeah, you're pre-warned. All right, um, let's get to it. Okay, so no white background it was causing a problem where the, it's wasn't big enough and i need to get a bigger bigger setup to allow for room so anyway um let's talk about where we're at so obviously the airframe's completed the props completed the clear parts have been dipped in future um the only things we haven't done is deal with the rocket fin scenario so we still need to deal with that. And, but this is ready. We're ready to do um, prep work here and I've already started. Um, I may have already filmed some of this so I may repeat myself here, but, um, so really what, I, what I'm gonna use here is only a few things. Um, and we'll have that too. Um, so, as you can see, the fit on this was really, really, really good. But what I have done is I just came in here with my scraper and leveled this out if it needed it, which it didn't really. Um, and then come in here and then I come in with a polishing stick and polish it out. Now, raised panel lines, right? So what I do is I will take the scraper and I will scrape up to that panel line. The scraper will stop, right? Then I'll jump over it and continue on. That's the way I do it. That leaves the panel line intact. Um, and when you're scraping, I mean, an easy way to see if you've got this thing evened out is if you're scraping on this line and you're actually removing plastic on both sides, then obviously it's even. If you're only removing plastic on one side, then, then you've still got a lip. You've still got one side higher than the other. Um, but as you can see, this is all pretty good through here. I, I need to do something here. I've actually got 
a spare gun sight here out of, I think, a P-51 kit um, that I could put in here, but it looks awfully big for this kit, and I'm not... Uh, I don't want to deal with having to, you know, cutting this thing out and then the windscreen not fitting and having to reposition the thing. I'm just not, I'm not interested in doing that. So we're just going to deal with what we got here. Okay. So yeah, I just go in here and... You know keep on these until they're level and then I just stay with it and I'm, I've got the same thing here I'm doing the same thing on the leading edges of the wings um, no different than anything else can you use your exacto knife to do this your hobby knife absolutely you certainly can but whoops sorry um, these little scribers are definitely worth the money, in my opinion. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit here and there until I get this out here. Now, there's a little piece of a sprue gate. So I'm going to come in here with this sanding stick and get that out. Now... Chances are doing a leading edge of the wing, you're going to lose detail. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to concern myself too much with it. I'm going to rotate a little bit. What about the guns? What about, well, yeah, you got to deal with those too. And these are kind of a different circumstance. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay. Do you have to polish the, the seams? You don't have to. Um, your primer might might cover up you know any sanding scratches just fine um, but as you can see this doesn't take any time at all and, uh, and boom they're done right and I keep hitting that take my hat off How's that? I don't know. okay See how much better that is than this. Come over here and do the same thing. Could you do this with a sanding stick? Absolutely, but it takes longer. The scraper is much, much faster. And then it comes to leveling surfaces. And, I, and the reason I'm, I'm leveling this is I had a, an overlap here on the leading edge. much more pronounced at the root than it is out here at the end. Okay. I'll come in here with the sanding stick. Quickly. See that guy right there? You can still see it. There we go. Now why do I twist my wrist like that? To keep it rounded, right? That way I don't sand it flat.
You don't want to sand it flat. That would not be good. Polishing stick. Okay, now you'll notice it's hard to get in here in places like this and you might have some, some fuzzies left over or something. And what you can do is just take your extra thin cement or whatever and just hit those fuzzies with it and it will just melt them right into the surface. So yeah, the, the liquid cement will, will melt stuff back into where it needs to be. Little pieces of stuff sticking up in places. Um, so that's always convenient. It's a good tool to have. And I've already scraped all of this under here and polished this out pretty good. I mean, you can still see this, yes, but and there's a little bit of a lip there, not much. Back here, yeah, okay, so we're gonna come back in here with the scraper. Scrape this out. I'm just using my nail to see if it catches, is all I'm doing. Because obviously if there's a lip there, your nail will catch on it, right? I mean, that makes sense. And you see how your residue is, is sitting in here, your sanding residue is sitting up against the ledge? There's hardly anything right here. My finger's not catching there, and it's barely catching out here anymore. So we're getting close here. Okay, we're still getting a little bit here. We're definitely getting some there. This is pretty deep back here, so I'm using quite a bit of pressure. We're pretty we're pretty good up front here now. Man, I just keep hitting that camera, don't I? Uh. I'll run this up here.
Okay, now that was not quite dry, that cement that I put on there. And that's okay, because what this does is it kind of pulls that edge over. And smooths it out. So you're basically melting that plastic and then forming it. And that really does a lot to get rid of that edge. Let me come back and polish. Do you have to polish? No. If you're, if you want to get really good joints. I think it's a good idea to polish, but is it absolutely necessary? No. But it really doesn't take much time. So why not? Right? I don't know if you can tell, but you can barely, I mean, you can still see the seam there, but, and it's a little bit raised, but it's, it's not terribly bad. And we're the same up here. Okay. Now these places where we got this excess glue and stuff, we're just going to hit those real quick here. And we're going to run this thing. Pretty much anywhere we see something that looks weird. Um, just as a kind of surface prep. And you just have to decide where you're going to stop, you know, and what's good enough for you. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you to make sure your seams are perfect. Um, what I'm going to tell you is do go as far as you want to go. Um, I think that's the point here because you, 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 don't turn this into a job, right? That's not what we're. We're not trying to turn this into a second job. That's not our goal at all. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Now, there is one area we need putty and that is back here. Um, well, I might be able to scrape those out. There's a little bit of a lip here right here and right here there was here but that's pretty flat now um, now the knife comes in handy here because the tip so i'm gonna scrape this here real quick and see what happens I'm just feeling it. Yeah, there's a definite dip right here. I can feel it. Um, so I'm just trying to get this level here.
get those to match. Do the same on this side. Get it to match here. And then we'll worry about this. That's pretty good. Much better than it was. Okay. Um, but I need These are my homemade 1500 grit standing sticks. All I did was took a piece of 1500 grit paper and glue a bunch of these craft sticks onto the back. And when I need one, I just cut it off. Or you can use it as a flat place to sand too <laughs> before you cut them off. So I'm gonna take this and get in here And just sand this out here, sand this in. Okay. A little too long. Just make it as long as you need it. Do whatever you want. Hard to hold on to. Plus this plastic is pretty smooth. You know, and again, we're dealing with older styrene here. This isn't newfangled gray soft styrene. This is old hard styrene. Um, which really is preferable, I think. clean this flap line out before it gets too jacked up on us here. I'm just using the back of the blade. Okay, and then clean this out here, obviously. Come in here. 
just some extra thin and just clean all this up. So we still have an issue right here. Um, and I have something new I want to try. There's, this is very shallow and not, um, there's not, you know, there's really no detail to worry about here. Um, do I want to try that or do I want to just scrape that out? I mean, if you can avoid using filler, you should always avoid using filler. That said, sometimes I get lazy and sometimes I just want to try something new. Um, so what do I want to do here? I was going to try some Vallejo pudding in there, but I think I'm just going to put some super glue in there. <laughs> That's my preferred method. That's my preferred filler. Um, oops. Is this gel? Oh, this is gel. I really don't want gel. Do I not have anything else? All I got is gel at the moment. Okay, well, we'll use it. We'll try it. I don't usually use gel to fill gaps because... Well, I guess mainly because I'm just not familiar with how it dries and whatnot. And, um, yeah. Just before I started filming this, I made a little video and posted it about why this video is late and alluded to some medical tests and stuff I've been having. And, um, while I was just sitting here talking through this, I just realized that, you know, this is part of the, it's having a direct effect on what we're, what I'm doing right now. So maybe I should just talk about it real quick. Um, basically I've been having, um, Well, I, I have an echocardiogram every year because I have an aortic aneurysm and I have a, a weak ventricle and then I have an enlarged um, ventricle or whatever, slightly enlarged. So um, I went and had that. Um, So after that, they gave the, I did a couple, an overnight breathing test, and it showed that my oxygen level was low all night long. My oxygen saturation in my blood. So, um, which led to um, a sleep apnea test, which I haven't got the results back on yet, and a I went in and had a, a cardio stress test yesterday, which I've had before. Um, and I don't have the results back on that yet either. But, um, you know, it's kind of like these one of these 2020 hindsight things where you start thinking about this stuff and putting two and two together. And it's like, okay, this probably has some reason, something to do with why um, I can't talk too well. <laughs> 
a lot of the time anymore and especially when I'm doing extended things like this I my uh my voice has suffered and what kind of brought this uh brought this to the fore like was last night I was going through some older videos um, because somebody was looking for some certain information and I was like you know I've got something on that let me find it and I was watching those and I was like wow these there's a big difference in my um voice and demeanor and stuff I guess um from a couple of years ago so um yeah that gets you thinking and you know so um anyway that's kind of the gist of it like i said in the video that i just posted i don't really know i don't have a whole lot of answers right now but i'm just sitting here doing this and listening to myself talk and 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 yeah it's some things seem pretty obvious once they're pointed out to you. <laughs> uh, but but here we are, right? Here we are. So, um, yeah, I don't like that gel that much, but we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. I'm not going to let it set up too much. I'm going to come in here and scrape the excess out right away. And get this out of the... Get that out of the picture. All right, we'll let the rest of it there harden up and then Maybe we can scrape it out and polish it up and see what happens. Get rid of that blade. Okay. Get a little bit more time. So while we're waiting for that, the other thing that I want to deal with, if you look at the guns, they're, they kind of point up, and that's because of the way the, the mold was done. The lower parts of the guns are, um, in p are, it's in pieces. This, the back section is part of the lower wing, the top section is part of the upper wing. So these ones I got to where I want them to be, but these ones are still poking up a bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to, I want to um, bend the front halves down. So I'm going to slot this where they come together again, just a bit. And I'm going to do the same over here. And that should allow us to bend these barrels down. Put a little bit of glue on here and bend these things down.
You know, what you could do is get you some aftermarket brass barrels. You know, that would be a thing to do. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay. That's pretty good there. So we'll have to clean those up. We'll clean this up here in a little bit. <clears throat> and then we, we have to deal with these, these lights. So what are we going to do with these lights? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, one is nothing, um, which isn't really a very good option. <laughs> and the other is, is to fill them in with something. Um, whether that's super glue or, or whatever is entirely up to you. Um, but you can use super glue, you can use um, clear part cement, um, which is what I tend to use, um, various things. So. Let me see how how will this work? Would this work well or not? Time to experiment a little bit. No, because it doesn't really span the gap. I need something that's going to span the gap, and that's not going to do it. Okay. So, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to find my tester's clear parts in that. And we're just going to take this, because this stuff will span a gap, right? Let's start here. And I'm just going to put it in here. If I can get it to flow. There you are. You see how it's bridging that gap? So then I'm just going to come in here, pick up the excess, because we don't want excess. We just want to fill the gap. There's that one. Why am I filling the gap? Well, because I want two things. I want to be able to paint it. Well, really, that's the main reason to fill the gap is just so that you can paint back in there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Clean this off. And this will get a little challenging right here because it's going to want to kind of take some up some, some of the space for the lens. So we'll have to deal with that when the time comes, when it comes time to put the lens in. Oh, come on. This side doesn't want to span like that side did. There. 
There we go. Bring up the edges. Yeah, they look ugly right now, but they're going to dry clear and we're going to pay them silver, so we don't care. And that's really about it for those. And now we're going to come back here. See if we can't fix this up. Now, why super glue? Why do I feel with super glue? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's, it's fast, um, obviously. And two, it polishes, and three, it scribes well. Um, and it doesn't shrink at all. Um, there's, the only downside is, is it gets really hard. So you have to work it when it's workable. Um, other than that, there's really no downside at all. It's, it's almost perfect as a filler, I think. Um, and I'm not the only one, you know, this is, none of this stuff that I do is something that I came up with. <laughs> Okay, um, so you know, I don't want you getting the, the idea that, that I'm some kind of super genius and came up with all this with these things because I didn't. Um, See that white is where all the sanding residue is sticking, is sticking into. So that mean obviously means it's not smooth, right? It's getting there. some water. Now the water does a couple of things for you when you're wet sanding. One, it, it allows the paper to glide much smoother. And two, it cleans all the dust out of the grit and out of your the area that you're working in. And 
There's still a bit of a ridge there. Okay. That is not perfect, but it's pretty good. And I, as I keep saying, you just kind of need to decide when you're done, you know, when you've had enough, um, when you're okay with it. Because this is about you, right? And what makes you happy and, and I'm not a perfectionist good enough is good enough most of the time our liquid cement again. Melt all this plastic. Come in through this, all of these areas. Okay, we're gonna let that sit. Once that's all situated, we'll come back with the scriber and make sure all our control surfaces are well-defined. And then I think we're ready for primer. So because we're that close to primer, I am going to mask the cockpit off. Various ways to do that. Um, Really for this, the way this thing is, I'm thinking I'm just going to use some of this paper towel. Wet it up a little bit. Oh, maybe not that much.
nice thing about doing gear up is we don't have to worry about masking wheel wells. But we are going to have to mask the intake, aren't we? Yep, yes we are. Okay. a little much. Don't worry too much about getting it perfect. You're not going to be sp spraying straight into the duct. Hopefully. It shouldn't be, anyway. Okay, there's that. Now, something I just noticed is right here where the wing root meets the chin radiator, there's a gap on the, where the lower wing meets the chin radiator. So, and that doesn't look great. That doesn't look like a lot of fun. That looks like a great place for Vallejo putty. Um, what did I do with it? Vallejo Plastic Putty. This is a brand new thing to me. I've never used this. But this little area that we're dealing with here seems to be the perfect place for it. So I'm just going to nip this off. See if we get it to come out. Is it sealed down here? Yes. It's all right, okay. Okay, get that on straight. Get it off of my fingers before I get it everywhere because that would not be good. Now, I'm not a big fan of acrylic putties. I have Mainly because I tried the Perfect Plastic Putty, which a lot of people love. I, that's the worst stuff I've ever used, in my opinion. That stuff is horrible. Um, so I'm just being up front with you here. This is not something that I'm crazy about. So we'll see what happens here. But like I said, this looks like the perfect place for it. Okay. 
Okay. Lids on. Q-tip. Wet Q-tip. Cotton bud, whatever you want to call it. Q-tip is a brand name here in the States, in case you're wondering. Well, look at that. I like that. I'm happy with that. Okay, just in case you didn't get to see that, let's do it again here. So I got the putty in the seam here, wet cotton bud, right across the gap, right across the area like so. The other end, which is dry, kind of come back and get at the rest of it. And then I got this piece of damp paper towel. I'm gonna get another piece of paper towel. Just come in here and clean up the aftermath. Okay, and this is gonna work good here. I, I, you know, I just got through talking about super glue and why I like it and it doesn't shrink and all that stuff. Something like this, it doesn't matter if it shrinks because that's gonna be a panel line anyway. So if it shrinks, that's perfect. Then I don't have to deal with it. Oh, I just sucked it all out. Well, that sucks. Did you see that? I just pulled it all out. <sighs> Apparently I did on this side too. Okay. Well, I guess we found a little bit of an issue. It's okay. I mean, it was simple enough. Let's just reapply it, right? It's not like it was a big deal. Okay. I guess I gotta get my technique down. <laughs> Wet cotton bud. Initial pass. Wet cotton bud initial pass on this side. Okay. Can you rinse it out? Not really. You just kind of have to go to the next side. Second, second pass, wet cotton bud, new one. Boom. This one. Boom. Okay. I think that's part of the trick. You just have to make sure you're always using a new cotton bud. And realize you might have to go over it once or twice. Yeah, look at that. Well, I have to say I'm a little, I'm pretty impressed with that. That's good. Um, except it does tend to migrate, doesn't it? <laughs> I would not suggest leaving it on the airframe if you can. Make sure you get it off as soon as possible. Yeah. 
at least off from where you don't want it, right? Okay, so where are we at? Uh, our seams are handled, our, our cockpit's masked. Um, we're ready for primer at this point. Um, and that's good. Um, but what do we need to do here? So I'm going to let the I'm going to let all this stuff dry and do its thing, and then I'm going to come back later with um, some alcohol and and clean it off with alcohol before we prime it. Uh, I need to decide on what primer I'm going to use. I think I'm just going to use gray. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to use gray style res. I need to think about masking the clear parts at some point. The rear, the rear part's not that big of a deal, <clears throat> but the the front part is. Are these good enough? Do I need to do some more work here? Maybe. They're okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's let it sit and we'll come back to it later. All right. Okay, well, I hope that was worth your time. Um, a couple things I want to touch on again is, is those, those uh, landing lights, um, you know, and, and uh, I'm pretty impressed with this Vallejo um, plastic putty. I did not... Uh, my previous experience with the acrylic putties made me very apprehensive about this, but I've heard really good things about it. And for what I needed it for there on this, uh, on that scoop there, on the edge of that scoop, um, it worked great, perfect. No complaints at all. So I'll probably be using that more often. Um, so if that's something that you might have a need for, I definitely recommend that. Um, our props here ready for primer too. I'm considering, I'm going to go on squat, squadron.com because I know they started re-releasing the vac canopies and they, there was a vac canopy made for this. So I'm, I might uh, go on there and see, I might consider getting the vac canopies for, for this. Um, we'll see. The other thing I just thought about is I have not put in the mount for the stand um, and that's something I need to <clears throat> I need to address hmm, okay um, well that's two things I need to deal with is the lights and the stand and then the third thing is the uh, rocket fins but I'm not even to that point yet um, anyway um, that's where we're at so I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, as usual, take care of the people you love. We'll see you next time. Bye.